talk about brain. So one way that uh, scientists, physicians study the brain is through the use of what's called your EEG, which stands for your electroencephalogram. And these EEGs normally can be detected when your synapses are active. So when they're in sync, when enough of them are in sync, they create a big enough impulse that can be detected at the level of the, of the skin. So basically, it's your, 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 your EPSPs that generate the EEGs that you see. And there are four basic EEG waves that are detected using, the, using the, this kind of scanner. So the types of EEG waves that we have. One, you have your alpha waves. If your alpha waves pop in at a hertz, meaning how often they, 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 they reappear, all right, around eight to 13 times per second, they reform. So that's the, the frequency, eight, 8 to 13 hertz. These normally are in awake individuals who are drowsy or drifting, but they're drowsy or the mind is wandering away. That's the alpha waves. Your beta waves, beta waves, a little faster, around 14 to 30 hertz. And these are normally present when you are alert. So when you are alert and even concentrating, like taking an exam, you should have beta waves showing up in your EEG. The third wave is your theta wave. That theta wave is around well, four to seven hertz. Normally shows up during Sleep as well, so it's around stage three sleep. So sleeping adults will show theta waves. It may also show up during emotional distress. Theta waves. And then fourth, you have your delta waves. And these delta waves are huge waves that have a very slow frequency around of about three, 0.5 hertz. So the slow, big, slow waves are your delta waves and normally present during sleep, during deep, deep sleep. We call it stage four sleep or slow wave sleep. Okay, so alpha waves are small and fast, beta waves are faster. Okay, thetas are a bit slower, okay, and delta are the slowest ones there. So please note for me the, the frequencies of the different waves and when you see them. Okay. Now, that, if delta waves is present in a person who is awake, that, may, that can make mean signs of brain damage. Okay. So, so it can be damage to, the, especially the cortex, damage to brain if present while a person is awake. The delta waves. All right. Now we use EEG as a convenient way to assess where you are in your sleep cycle. So let's look at sleep. Okay, anyways. So sleep. Sleep really is done a certain way. It, it, it's a state of temporary unconsciousness but you can be awakened from it. It's done, in its best way, it's done lying down with eyes closed. That's the best way to sleep. That's where it's most useful. Okay. Now sleep occurs in stages, all right? So you, you're awake, you fall asleep, you go deeper, 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 then back, back, up, 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 REM sleep back down. So let's so, so, so put this down. So you start off here, you're awake. So we're doing the, the sleep stages. You're awake here. And you drop down into stage one sleep. A little further into stage two, 
further. Stage three, then the deepest sleep is stage four sleep, and then you come back up to stage three, to stage two, to stage one, briefly, and then into what's called REM sleep. Okay. REM. So those are, so those are the, the, the sleep stages. So again, you're awake, you go stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, back to stage three, stage two, then briefly in stage one, then jump into what was called REM sleep. So, so and this typically takes about, about around seven, seven minutes or so to get through a cycle. So let's go through these different types of sleep. So stage one sleep, so your sleep stages. Stage one, sleep, what we call your, that's when you're feeling drowsy. Okay, you kind of drifting off to sleep. Okay, you feel drowsy there and you have a lot of alpha waves are present in stage one sleep. Stage two sleep, here we call that light sleep. And here uh, there's a, a certain EEG feature that occurs mostly in stage two sleep. That's called your, your sleep spindle, where it's like a burst of activity, burst. And these bursts of activity, of activity are called your sleep spindle. They tend to happen only in stage two sleep, and, that's, and they're used as a marker of stage two. If you see sleep spindles in, on the EEG, you're in stage two sleep. Then your stage three sleep, Here it calls moderate to deep sleep. Moderate to deep sleep here. And the EEG here typically is theta and delta wave that you pick up on here. Also during stage three sleep, your vitals, things like your heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate are all down. They drop down. Okay. Then we have stage four sleep. Let's call you deepest sleep. Deepest sleep, okay? And also called slow wave sleep because it's dominated by delta waves, okay? It's hardest to awake you from stage four sleep. You know, you have extreme sleep paralysis here. Muscles are inhibited from moving, so you can't, can't, can't move really, you can still breathe, and twist, but as, as far as voluntary movements go, during this state, you're in a, a very deep form of sleep paralysis. And then you come back up to a, to a, a lighter sleep, stage three, stage two, stage, stage two, stage one, and then REM sleep. REM sleep is what we call paradoxical sleep. Because here, the EEG, looks as if you're awake and, and, and concentrated. So here you have beta waves, is what you find during REM sleep. Your eyes move, eyes oscillate, move back and forth beneath your eyelid. That's why it's called REM, rapid eye movement sleep. Also, your O2 consumption is way up. You consume more oxygen, O2, during REM sleep than when you're awake. So it's, it's a really active, active form of sleep, okay? All right, what do you want to discuss here? So again, so note for me then, the, 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 the cycle may last about 70 minutes, 70 minutes. You go down, one, two, three, four, three, two, quickly one, back to REM, then you go back, back down again. So it doesn't stop here, right? You go back down, two, again, one, two, three, four, and back up again. The staircase effect, or the staircase of parents, where you go down, up, down, up, and cycle. So you, you know, maybe throughout, throughout a night, of like eight hours sleep, maybe just maybe five, six times per night, you get to, you, you go through a, a sleep cycle. Okay.
What do we want to talk about some more? Now, as you cycle, cycle through the night. So it's just one cycle, another one, another one, another one. As you cycle through the night, progressively, you have your stage four sleep, stage four sleep per cycle drops while your REM sleep increases. You spend more time in REM as you go through the night and less time in stage four. In fact, you probably only stage four sleep, maybe the first, in your first two cycles. Afterwards, you hang out, the deepest you go is stage three and back up, then stage three and back up. Okay, so no, please don't have for me. And on average, for a eight hour cycle, you know, eight hour sleeping period, where you may do, do the six times, you spend about 50% 50, 50 of your time is spent in stage two. That's the longest one there. Around 25% or so is in REM. And then, what, what's that? Around 20% is stage three and four combined, and about 5% in stage one. So that's how, on average, how much time you spend in each, each sleep stages throughout a typical eight hour cycle. All right, so let's keep going, some more information here. So dreams, dreams occur, but so dreams mainly occur during the REM. That's where most of the dream occurs, during REM. And these dreams are you know, REM dreams are vivid, emotional dreams. Things that make your blood pressure go up while you're sleeping, okay? The dreams that you may have in non-REM, you, so you can still dream in non-REM, meaning in stage one, two, one, two three, four. So non-REM dreams, typically, this is where you have nightmares. So nightmares come from non-REM dreams, not from REM dreams. But your, your dreams are as well, which, which may not be as vivid or emotional, or it may even be, be more, more, more forgettable, except of course, when, when, when the nightmares. How do you control sleep? Okay. So sleep is an active thing. You fall asleep when your brain pushes you into sleep. Okay. And so to, to sleep, your lower reticular formation, which is an area in the brainstem, will trigger sleep. While your upper reticular formation triggers arousal, wakes you up when it's active. You also have parts of the hypothalamus as well is involved in sleep induction, hypothalamus and lower or RF. As far as chemicals go for sleep, the chemical called adenosine, which is an RNA part of the RNA nucleotide, adenosine causes sleep. Sleep, sleep inducer. The more that you have, the more sleepy you feel. Caffeine blocks this from working. That's why this how caffeine kind of perks you up, okay? By, by blocking the action of adenosine. There's also another chemical called orexin. Two of them called orexins. These are the ones that will arouse you. Arousal comes from these chemicals. When they're released in the brain, they wake you up. People who have what's called narcolepsy, where they fall asleep at inappropriate times very quickly, for, during the day especially, are lacking orexins in their body. They have low levels of, levels of orexins, so they can't keep up, they can't switch to being awake. They're, they're constantly, constantly in, in, in a sleeping steep, state. Okay. What else do we want to talk about for sleep here? Sleep as well. So some things that happen in sleep is not, we do a lot of sleeping, it's not quite clear why we need so, why we need so much sleep, okay? So it's not quite clear the, the role of sleep, but we know that your REM helps to interpret your day. 
what happened during the day. You, you kind of rehearse it or replay it, replay it during REM. That's what, what one of the ideas, one of the, the, the ideas of, of what we thought REM, REM does for you. Then we know that non-REM non -REM sleep is involving memory. So your memory lays down during non-REM sleep, which is a good thing because we spend around 80% of our time in non-REM versus REM sleep. So, the memory, so sleep helps your memory, put it that way. Your sleep spindles, which are present in stage two, are predictive, predictive of learning. Learning ability, learning new new task. The more sleep spindles that, that that occur during your stage two, the more ready you'll be after you wake up to learn new things. Okay, that's that's a, 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 that's been shown. And then as well, sleep deprivation we know can lead to death. You must sleep to stay alive, and we need sleep. I mean, eight hours of sleep is good. We need it. People who sleep a little. Bit Little, very little, tend to die earlier. You know, if you say have a four hour sleep, it's good, it's good to take naps during the day. Rebound your sleep. Get back, try to get up to an eight, eight, seven, eight hours of sleep. Very good. Get it done, please. Okay. We'll pause there. <laughs>